All right, as I went to go uh, get the screws to put this in, couldn't find any drywall screws I wanted to use. Mine were a little too fat. So I did find some silver screws that came in the box. We're gonna use these. So, push the wire up in the ceiling. Put that guy in the corner. I'm gonna try to do this without blocking the camera. I'm really sorry if I do. Lock the camera. There's not a lot to, to worry about when you do this. Just make sure that when you put the screw down, you don't screw through the wire or mess up the wire in any way. Whoa, I'm too low. I got an inch of wire hanging out right there. It's too busy. Worried about the camera could see. So I'm gonna put that sucker all the way up against the ceiling so you can't see that hole. Okay, remember, this is just a gentle little motion detector. Don't go crazy and kill these screws. It starts like deforming the lid and stuff. It's crazy on you. Just put the screws in gently. All right, so I'm gonna put one top right. I'm gonna put one over here. Bottom left. So it kind of keeps top and bottom. All right, that's it. Screw down, and then time to put the lid on. Make sure you put it on right side up. This guy is being difficult with my wire. Bam, done. Now, sometimes they'll have little screws or something like that that you can put onto the bottom that kind of keep the lid from popping off accidentally. Mine has a screw that you turn. It's just a little plastic guy that kind of makes a wedge, like a locking mechanism. So make sure you put that in. Um, and that's it. Moving on. All right, let's go ahead and do a window contact. So I pulled the wire out of the corner. You can see down here. I drilled a three eighths hole, but um, the drywall is kind of fragile here in the corner, so I bust it up a little bigger. But it should be a three eighths hole. I just uh, took a little head start, pulled the wire out, stripped it, and got my contact ready. This is the window contact that we're using. Okay, so um, this is how I do it. You can do it a few different ways. So don't think that this is the only way to do it. This is how uh, uh, we were doing it back when I was doing um, um, uh, housing complexes. So anyways, um, I go ahead and I, and I strip. You can see the wires here are two different lengths. I strip it and then I have my first wire about two inches long. The next wire is about two inches longer than that. And then I do the same thing to my contact. Well, I've got one short one and one long one. So the first thing I do is I'm going to take my short one here. It doesn't matter which color you go to. Remember, this is just a contact. This is a dumb wire. It doesn't have a brain. It doesn't have electricity. It's just a light switch. It doesn't matter where I, uh, which wire goes to what. So I'm going to take my short wire here, and I'm going to go to my long wire. I'm going to twist them together. Now I'm going to go ahead and solder my wires together. You don't have to. You can use crimps, but we're, at the end of the day, we have to push this wire back into that hole. So when you solder it, it saves the size of a connector, makes it a little easier to work with. And it's a good sure connector, you know it's never gonna come off. So my short one goes to my long one, and then I'm gonna do the opposite over here. My long one from my contact goes to my short one on the window wire, okay? I'm gonna go over here and grab my soldering iron. And when you're soldering, I'm not trying to heat up the solder, I'm trying to heat up the wire. So I'm gonna hold my tip on that wire for a little bit. I'm just going to put a light coat of solder over the top of the wire. All right, one down.
Uh, you can use a corded soldering gun here. I like, I really like these uh, butane torches. They're pretty nice. All right, that's all I need. Bam. Turn off my torch. Going to give that sucker a second to cool down. Then we're going to tape it up. It cools down really fast, so it's already cool. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this thing flat. Just like that. And it takes the next one. I'm going to lay it flat. Now you'll note that I'm trying my best to keep the wires away from each other, right? I don't want these accidentally to touch each other because that totally voids the use of the contact. So I've got them a good at least two inches apart. I'm going to take this, woo! I'm going to take this white tape. I'm going to do my best to tape it pretty in case any of it sticks out of the wall, which it shouldn't. And I'm going to do my best to tape it tight. Now, if you want to do this even a little, you know, a better way to do this would to use um, the shrink tubing. That's better. If you're doing your own house, it's a good way to do it. it looks a little cleaner, but you're never going to look at this again. Ugh, you're never going to see it again, and this will hold for a very, very long time. Oh, there, my sticky back just came off. Okay, so now... I'm going to stick mine to the window, so I don't need this tab right here. I'm going to go and break this tab off. This is a screw tab, and if I, as a matter of fact, if I used the screw tab, it would go right into my window, my window wouldn't close. So, I'm going to go ahead and push the wire back in the hole, best I can. Ah, see, it gets hard to push the wire in there, so that's why Soldering is better than using those uh, dolphin connectors or anything like that. Keeps it nice and small. Go ahead and get a little assistance from my long screwdriver. There we go. All right, and I'm just going to stick it to my window. If you find that you've got a hard time getting it to stay on your window, you might have to use some clear adhesive uh, caulking. And that's it. So you can see there's a hole there with my wire coming out. After I go and do all my contacts, I'm gonna come back with some caulking, um, <clears throat> some paintable caulking. I'm gonna fill in that hole, then I can come back after the caulking dries and I can paint over it. It'll look perfect. So that's it for the contact side. Now we have to do the magnet. So when you put your magnet on, there's really not super difficult. It's pretty easy to do. Once again, I don't need this screw down part. I'm just going to get rid of that. There's not a lot of magic to putting these things on. Um, mine has a black dot. The black dot, my, for me, the black dot indicates that's the one side that goes next to the connector. Um, there's not a lot of magic. All you got to do is make sure that when you put this on, mm, this is going to be upside down. I'm going to flip it over. I say it's upside down because I don't want to look at that, the magnet side. So this black dot needs to face towards my contact, but I don't want to look at that, so I'm going to flip it over. So I just put the tape on the other side. Anyways, um, you want to make sure that when you close the window, that your contact doesn't get knocked off. Sometimes the window will go down and then come back up a little bit, and that could bust your contacts off. So I'm going to put mine right there. I've already tested it, and I know that that right there is going to work. It's right up against the edge. I don't love that it's right up against the edge, but uh, I checked this out for a while. I couldn't really put it underneath because my uh, <coughs> the, the magnet would hit here. So this ended up being the best option for me. That's it. One window's down. I forgot, I forgot to mention, as a side note, they don't have to be this close. Mine are like right up to each other. Actually, when I normally do them, I usually have about a quarter inch gap they start working 
uh, somewhere around three eighths of an inch, half an inch away, they start to work. So if you're about a quarter inch away, I, I usually try to try not to go any more than a quarter inch away. Um, but as long as you're about that distance, they'll work fine. These are really close together. But I tried it, and I can't knock off that magnet. I can't knock off, off that magnet if I wanted to. So that's where she's going to stay. Um, I don't love it, but I've just got a tiny little bezel here, and I don't want the magnet to be seen from the outside. So i got to keep the magnet on the tiny bezel, and this guy up to the front. So that's just how it's going to have to work. So this is a front door contact. Uh, not a lot of magic here. I went ahead and did exactly what I did on the other window uh, where I cut one short, one long. I put long to short, short to long. That's where we're at right now. Ready for solder. I can do this without killing myself. I'm in sandals right now. If I would have dropped some of that solder on my foot, woo wee, that would have sucked. Okay, it's pretty cool to the touch now. Same thing, keep it nice and tight, bend them away from each other, tape it up. Now, really important to note that this is a 3 8 inch hole. It has to be a 3 8 inch hole. Has to be a 3 8 inch hole. I'm using a 3 8 inch contact. 3 8 inch hole. Okay, I drill it in. I ran the wire through. This is all done during construction. Or uh, the remodel, I should say. So there we go. Here's my contact on the end. This contact looks different, but it works identical to the window contacts. It just looks different. It's built to go inside. So, taped up, soldered. Oh gosh. Doesn't want to go in the hole. Let's get a little tweaker on there. See if we can't encourage him a little bit. Generally, these go right back in. This guy wants to be difficult. Careful if you use your screwdriver to push it back in. We don't want to stab the jacket. Create a short, so I'm being very gentle. Okay, once we get to the end there, all I gotta do is push it up, and it's designed to hold itself in place. Just like that. If for some reason it doesn't hold itself in place, you can put a little adhesive caulk on there. Um, but that's it. Now the contact's in, we just have to put the magnet on, and I'll move the camera and show you how to do that. Okay. So now I've gotta make sure that I mark the door in the correct spot. My contact is exactly right here. This is where my contact is, halfway into the door jam, right above the door, right here. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark the top of the door. Remember, this doesn't have to be exact. The magnets work quarter inch, three eighths, of, three eighths of an inch away, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So I marked it, and we're gonna use, once again, three eighths inch drill bit. We're gonna drill right into the top of the door. We're gonna go down about an inch. Okay, we're gonna go into the top of the door, right in the middle. Ooh, hammer drill. All right, stop, hammer drill. Don't tell my wife what a mess I just made. All right, then here's my magnet, 3 eighths of an inch. I just tap it in there. And this is my, my drill hammer. Okay, I'm gonna line it up. Boom! Perfect. That's it. Door contact, done. Next, let's go ahead and do the power supply. So here's my power supply right here. Um, See, so notice it's got a screw in it right there. If you've got the standard monkey face duplex outlets, um, what you would do is you would take out the center screw that holds in the face plate, and then you would screw this outlet in. And that keeps it so that your kids or your cleaning lady um, don't accidentally unplug your security alarm system. It keeps it plugged in there. And by the way, if you have a cleaning lady, um, what do you do for a living? Because I don't have a cleaning lady. I would like to have a cleaning lady. So... Let me know. Okay, anyways, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and hook this guy up. This is the wire that I ran for my power supply. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some forks on it. Cause this is stranded wire. Okay, put the forks on, no big secret here. Strip it, push it in there, make sure that you're not getting the rubber underneath there. And crimp it down using, I have insulated, I have insulated forks, so I'm gonna use the insulated side of my crimpers. Okay, alrighty. Afro Dighty. Forks are on there pretty good. Come over here. I don't have a screwdriver. Be right back. Here we go. Loosen the screw. Loosen the screw. I'm gonna go ahead and fish this guy through my bundle into position where I want him to be when I plug him in. All right. This right here is an AC transformer, so polarity doesn't matter. Red on one, black on the other. Okay. That's it. I got a tight squeeze in here. I got a lot of stuff, dude. Ugh. Bam! You probably couldn't hear it. You probably couldn't hear it. But my keypad just kicked on. Boop! So that's it. My, pop, my security alarm system is powered up. All right, this is the last piece of our installation um, that we're gonna show here at least. Um, this is the siren. So there's a lot of different types. The majority of the sirens that you guys are gonna see are the ones that just mount on the wall. We call those surface mount. I wanted one that was a little more discreet, something that went inside the wall, so it just kind of, you know, looks kind of flush mount. So I like that. Anyways, um, a lot of yours are gonna have wires that come out. They might have like a black wire 
and then a red wire and a yellow wire or something like that. The black wire is going to be your common, that's going to be your negative, and then the, the other two wires are going to dictate what you want the siren to do. So if you want the siren to make like a steady then you could go on the wire that's labeled steady. If you want the wire to do a warble, which is like doo 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 doo, then uh, you go on that. So that's what the two wires are for. Uh, one is one is for warble usually, and one is for steady. It just dictate, dictates the sound. On mine, I don't have that option. Mine is just a steady buzzer, um, and mine just has two screws on the top. So remember, when we did our horn. There's only two, two connections that we make, a positive and a negative, but we have four wires. So what we do is we pair the wires. The, I paired the black and green on one side, and I pair the red and yellow on the other. And on my alarm, I've got a positive and a negative. I don't know if you can see that. It looks like a pregnancy test, huh? Oh no, you're having a baby. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to put my red and yellow. I'm going to put my red and yellow on the positive. My black and green on the negative. You son of a gun, why are you being so difficult? It's because I'm on camera, huh? As always, you don't want too much copper hanging out. You don't want any rubber on there. Look at that wire keeps coming out. Son of a gun. You son of a gun. I don't like this. I think I might put a hook on here. I need another hand. Okay. It wins. What I'm going to do, since these wires aren't really fitting underneath the tab very well, this is another thing you guys can do. I'm going to strip off a little more wire, off all of them. I'm going to twist my pairs together, so that means red and yellow get twisted together. Black and green get twisted together. And I'm going to make a hook. And Now I'm going to hook the screw. Son of a gun, that's not making it easy on me, are ya? Hmm. Red and yellow. Done. Pulling on each one individually, not coming out. Alright. Let's go over here to black and green. Don't do that at home. <clears throat> Every once in a while my wipeout champness comes out and I break stuff. Crazy strong. Alright, let's figure out this thing back together again. Like it never happened. Crazy, dude. Okay. Black is good. Green is good. Red is good. Yellow is good. Everything's back together again. Everybody's happy. Stick that sucker in the wall. Just like that.
they have this thing, they invented it just a little while ago. It's called a drill. Drill. Makes it a little faster. But, I'm too lazy to get one. That's it, mine came with these little wire caps I can put over the, or end caps I can put over the screws. So it looks awesome, like a pro did it. Bam, bam, I don't know how you're gonna get those caps off. If you ever have to adjust this thing, good luck. Anyways, done. So, uh, I think I showed you, I think I showed you a little bit of everything. So, that'll do it for that part. Well, there you go. I think we've covered enough information here that I feel comfortable that you guys can at least wire up your own security system. Um, so I think we've covered a lot of devices here. We covered the power supply. We've covered the bell, motion detectors, um, recessed door contacts and surface mounted windows contacts, um, keypads, and uh, how to do the panel, how to do a single zone, how to put multiple devices, multiple devices on the same zone. So I feel like you guys have enough information that you can wire up your own system. Obviously, we're not done yet. There's still some programming and troubleshooting to do. Uh, we'll cover that in another video. But uh, thanks for watching. And like always, from You Do AV, I'm Alan. And today we did AV. Now, you do AV.